Coming to you live from their studio in South Florida, Twist Gaming. Featuring lead broadcaster, Matt Coza. Co-host and creative genius, Josh Perry. Co-host and interviewer extraordinaire, Anne Lazito. Co-host and marketing mogul, Aaron Murphy. With appearances from special guest, Lucy. Welcome to Twist Gaming, where you get to play board games with us. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. This is Twist Gaming, where you get to play board games with us. We are coming to you live here from our studio in sunny South Florida, bringing you another first impression of our Spotlight stream. But first up, who are we? I'm Matt. I'm Ann. I'm Josh. We're Twist Gaming, and we just completed our Spotlight of Catacombs Cubes by Elzra Games, coming on to Kickstarter on August 21st. Uh, so right around the corner. Uh, if you haven't watched our Spotlight yet, definitely go and check that out. We do a full playthrough and rules explanation of the game, yeah. and you can uh, check that out. But our first impression session is where we talk about our favorite aspects of the game, any constructive criticisms that we might have, with the caveat of this is our first playthrough. And we are playing a, a prototype. prototype copy of a Kickstarter game. Mm -hmm. And then the final most important question of the evening. Would we play it again? Mm -hmm. So first up, we're going to start with our favorite aspects of the game. So things that really jumped out to you. So I, I'm going to take us away with this one here because I really enjoyed the spatial awareness puzzle of the building of the uh, the buildings. Yeah. So each of the buildings and... Uh, Get a really cool well, one. I skipped a step. Josh, what kind of game is Catacombs Cubes? Uh, Catacombs Cubes is... Resource management, dice. Oh, we played the dice draft in way of it. There's another way to play. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a couple different things about it. Uh, it's a little bit of. I don't know what the term I want to use for playing the tiles down. Um, tile placement? Yeah, tile placement. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we can go with that term. If that works. Uh, and it is a victory point game. Yeah, it's a victory point game. So we're going and we're trying to cooperative build, cooperatively build a town, but we're getting victory points based off of what kind of buildings we put down and how much we contribute to communal buildings as well. So highest score in the end wins. Yeah. Uh, so throughout the game, we're collecting different resources, which are shaped with various uh, two-dimensional and three-dimensional pieces. Hey, you know how you could get a really good view of those? Uh, doing this. Like yeah, that. And yeah. I could also do like that. Hey! Uh, so we've got pieces, you know, kind of like your classic Tetris type shapes. And we've got some singular pieces here. And each of these represents a different building material. Did you want this piece? No. Uh, so then we're building to these blueprints. And each of these blueprints have, you know, kind of a variation. And it shows you in a single, like basically a kind of a way that you could build it, yeah. if you will. It tells you the total quantity of cubes required. It tells you a layout of how many cubes tall it is in certain places, or how many cubes thick, and uh, you know for flavor what kind of building. And then you can flip it over and show the building afterwards. That's a great example because everything's green. Adorable. Okay, but hide the light on the side because sometimes it makes it help with the green screen a little with your hand. I, no. No, not that. It, it's it's green. All right. Uh, and then victory points and additional actions on the top there. So the kind of spatial awareness puzzle of you trying to figure out how to make the shapes that are available with the Tetris style pieces that you've got in your uh, building area on your player mat, I thought was just super cool and was a really nice puzzle element that I haven't seen in too many places before. So that, that definitely appealed to me, especially when I was taking my drafting classes back in high school. We did <laughs> spatial awareness exercises and this kind of gave me like a very happy flashback of that uh and it was it was pretty cool how that's, about you Anne? that's super cute i i have to admit i want to piggyback with you piggyback off of you with the spatial awareness and the puzzle Woo! hi how are you doing but i have to say probably my favorite part of the game um aside from the puzzly element eh, god i love this camera is the buildings. I love the little bit of attention to detail. So you see that this is our completed city that we made, which is a 4x4 four four grid. I take the award for the coolest buildings, I believe, in the portal. You do, because you made uh, the Stargate. Yeah. But each of these buildings on the front side, if you flip them over, they correlate pretty nicely. <laughs> Break it. I feel like Godzilla. Um, to the buildings that they relate to. And I just thought that that was so cool. It just added that, like purpose for what I'm actually building. Mm -hmm. I think that that was probably the coolest thing. 
Um, I did obviously like the puzzly element. I'm curious to see how the other varieties of the game play. I like that there's different options. So we played with the one with the uh, the dice drafting as well as the semi-random elimination of the blueprints. Yeah. Uh, and the uh, step-down resources. So in this part of the game, uh, whenever you built a blueprint, the blueprint to the far left was eliminated and everything slid down. Right. And then when resources were all consumed from the communal pool, then uh, if you were to gain that resource, you would then instead gain the resource that was a step down from that. Right. So there are more cutthroaty versions uh, where you would, whoever's the quarry master, uh, who is the person that's in charge of... I mean, I mean the first player token, sorry. Quarry I'm totally master g- token. Totally, yeah, the quarry master token. It's just a big brick. Uh, like, I think that that's so... Uh, thematically appropriate. Yeah, and, like, it's so simple, and it's just really thematically appropriate, and it's super cute, and I feel like a ju- like a gavel. So, correct me if I'm wrong here, Josh. The quarry master is the one that is choosing which building to eliminate when they build it? Yeah. Uh, or the person that builds it? Whoever, someone gets to build a building, but the quarry master gets to decide which one gets discarded. Okay, that's what it I was It doesn't matter for. who built it. So, the quarry master is going to be in charge of destroying the building, the blueprint, uh that gets eliminated when someone creates a building, which yes. I think is interesting. Uh, and then the resource rule that changes is that when the resource is no longer available, you would then steal it from the available player to your left? Uh, yes. Okay. So you're going around the circle and you're stealing it from people. So if you want a more kind of backstabby player interaction version, I guess you could play that version. Sounds like it's right up your alley. Yeah, right. All right. Those are, pr- and um, I like that there's like a couple of things going on. I like that there was multiple ways to get victory points. So mm-hmm. the first way is building buildings. You get victory points based on the complexity of the buildings that you've built. But there's also this communal uh, building of the palace option. And you get resources for contributing to that, which was kind of a co op thing. Um, you weren't. I never felt stuck in this game. I always felt like there was something I could do. That's true. I I do have to agree with that. That uh, there was always options for what to build. Yeah. Even if it might not have been ideal for you. Yeah. You were never completely dead in stuck. the water. Josh, how about you? Um, agree with your guys' sentiment. Um, I kind of would have liked to play with the tokens. I thought uh, reading the rules after we played mm-hmm. would have been kind of cool. Um, it adds a different little. Um, the you pick you choose but having the last person have some secret knowledge at the same time it makes that really interesting which we didn't get to play with though um, but yeah I think you guys hit most of the points I do like the little puzzly thought of when you're placing what building I don't know if you guys thought about enough of which building I'm going to go after so I can try to activate the most Beneficial thing with the beneficial triangles thing on the map and the diamonds. The triangles. Mm-hmm. Um, I like that he criticized our playing. No, style I don't. I, I, I said, said that I, you guys didn't think about. No, it. No, I said I don't know if you guys like. That was something I would. I didn't consider till the second half of the game, um, as things were going on, um, of what to trigger and what would be beneficial. Mm-hmm. Uh, so th- there was a little bit of that of also helping try to figure out what resources and what buildings I wanted to go after, mm-hmm. um, which made it, which puts a lot of thought into it. Um, yeah, it's interesting when you could piggyback and you kind of hit a combo of a couple things. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't think anyone had any time where we hit three spaces together. No. Uh, because we were playing conservatively to try and prevent people from doing that. Um, but I, there was one round where I lined up two black ones to each other, so I got four obsidian, which the next round I was immediately able to build something because I carried over two obsidian right. also. So I thought that that was kind of cool that you can... A little bit of a chain. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, yeah. What is the player count in this game? Uh, one to five. There's a solo mode. Oh, that's interesting. Um, all right. So moving into the constructive criticism portion of this phase, uh, this review, and this is going to be based on the fact that this is our first playthrough of the game. And again, Proto- this is the prototype copy of the game. It will be going live on Kickstarter on uh, Wednesday, the twenty-first of August. So very, very soon. Uh, but keep in mind, Kickstarter, things can change. Yeah. Uh, so based off this, anything that you would change to suit your own personal tastes? I don't know 
about change, but I do want to make a comment. Mm -hmm. I feel as if this game is a game that would be better suited to a larger group, which is why I asked specifically about what the higher end is for the player count. So we play with three. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like aspects such as the cooperative palace weren't... Um, we didn't explore it enough because I felt like we were able to do focus on one thing and weren't, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? We weren't pushed into other options. Right. So when you set up the game, you set Josh set it up with choice with two palaces, one that we knew immediately about and one that was secret. And it cost twenty resource cubes in order to build a palace. And he was, he w as he was discussing the rules, he was saying, "Okay, you have a separate track for how many cubes you've contributed to building this palace. The track goes up to twenty. So you know, everything that." The impression that I got when he was discussing the rules led me to believe that we would be interacting more yeah. with the palace. Especially the fact that there was two of them that were in play. Exactly. Yeah. I thought, like, okay, 40 cubes to build two palaces. This is going to be something that we really interact with. And it ended up being that it wasn't. So Josh contributed the most cubes, mm -hmm. and that was seven, and I contributed six. So it just was not anywhere near the 40 that I felt. Additionally, the victory point track tracker typically gives t gives me a feel of how many points a game is supposed to have. Mm -hmm. Our victory point tracker goes up to 67. Josh won the game with 43. I kind of felt like we would have at least exceeded 58 or one of us would have exceeded 58 in the game. Now, it is our first playthrough, mm -hmm. but I think that with more players um, hogging more choices, I think you would have had to interact with more options. So, Josh, does the size of the completed town increase with yes, more players? Yes, the size complete. Uh, the size does increase. So, a uh, four-player game is a four by five grid, and then a five-player game is a five by five grid. Okay. Um, so the town does get bigger. Um, so you probably get more points in those bigger games, and yeah. the smaller games you're getting the smaller point games. And then our audience was saying that there is an impact as to whether you're playing the dice version or the token version, which impacts overall gaming. And a lot of us didn't take the contribute that often. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm yeah. Why do you think that there would be more points in a larger player game? Because we're probably going to be building these palaces more and going up this track more. You'd be laying more buildings. And there'd be more buildings laid. There's more buildings, but less per Keys. person. Yeah. Maybe. That I didn't, I didn't consider maybe. that. <laughs> you divide the numbers. Yeah. Uh, so... Yeah, it, it seems like with more people, the score would kind of stay somewhat similar, if not maybe a tad bit lower, because you're not getting that many more points for building a palace. It's it's a five-star thing, five five victory points. Get a lot more points how much you contribute, though. If you get higher up the track, that's true. Then every point you're contributing is, is more. So, yeah, I guess you... It looks, in retrospect, it looks like prioritizing the red tokens... And pushing those seems to be very beneficial. I didn't use the gray tokens once. I don't know about either of you two. I didn't. Uh, I think that we kind of got the resources that we needed. We focused our strategies see all seem to be build the buildings. And to be honest yeah. with you, I think that that's the most fun part of this game is building the buildings. Oh, yeah. Get the, the spatial awareness of it. I mean, that was far and away my favorite part the of the game. Yeah. So I would much rather build the buildings and have the fun there, I think then, I think if I was, I think you're right. Like, in hindsight, there's definitely a lot more victory points to be made when contributing to the palace. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that if I was prioritizing my victory points, I would have gone there. But I kind of went into, you know, it's the first time you're going into a game blind. You're going to be attracted to the most fun feature. That's true. A um, quick note, yeah. uh, for the solo player, at average score, uh, so the apprentice is under 31 points. And the Grandmaster is 51 plus points. And that's 51 a solo. 51 plus points for a Grandmaster, and the track goes up to 67. That is that is odd. Uh, the, the track might just go up just because that's how big the board was, and they just wrapped it around for worst-case scenarios. I have no idea. Uh, just let th But that's the solo mode. So that's not saying what a two- or three-player or any other side game is. Fair enough. Um, to me, it felt like the building 
point values and bonuses didn't quite line up. Um, there was three levels of buildings. Yep. There's a level one, two, and three. A three, five, and seven point. Correct. And all of the three pointers were gain an obsidian. All of the five pointers were contribute, and all of the seven pointers were gain a resource of your choice. So, given the way that they scaled, it seemed like it was, you know, extremely, extremely beneficial to go for the higher point ones. Um, yeah, I, I feel like I. So I was. I tend to go for like the build smaller buildings faster thing, yeah. and I don't think that that works very well in this. I game. think that's what we did, and that might be why our scores are also on the lower end because we built a lot of three point buildings. I really enjoyed the challenge of building the larger buildings, though. Yeah, and I think that you and Josh both built larger buildings than I did, on the whole. Because you were trying to push them out. Right, and that's why I even chained the two together, and why I was kind of hoarding obsidian so I could just shotgun out a couple of smaller buildings yeah. to try and flood the map and yeah. it just didn't seem to work out in my favor and I don't know if that was just error on my spot um, I would have liked to have seen the freebie actions with the buildings maybe randomized a little bit so not all of the three pointers give you an obsidian not all of the five pointers contribute one to the pool because some of the three pointers are harder to build than some of the other three pointers. I I would agree with you there. So like a level one A and B. Yeah, I think that would be interesting. Is to even even if it was just completely randomized. Yeah. I think that would be pretty neat just to add a little bit more dynamicness to what a, what building you're trying to to build. Definitely. I do hope that with the final version of this game that there's more buildings because we went through the deck once. Yeah. Uh, I do hope that there's more building choices to be made and more complex building choices. And because right now we did a 4x4 four four that's uh, 16, yeah. which means we're laying 15 buildings. But you have, re I mean, like, if you put a ton of building, a ton of well thought out buildings, you get replayability in the game because, like, maybe right. you don't get to see all the buildings right. in a game. Right, right, right. That's and, cool. And especially the fact that a, uh, a five player game would be, you'd be laying 24 buildings. And that's you know, nearly doubling the amount that we put down. Yeah. So uh, that would definitely make you run through this deck a couple times. And I, so I agree. Yeah. I think seeing additional buildings would be cool. Um, th we do have the personal buildings, which I thought was really yeah. neat. Uh, and kind of a cool backup plan. Uh, although they were very complex. Yeah, all, all of them are... They're, they were a little complex. Flex, Which I like thought was interesting because I I had figured in my head that they would kind of be a risk mitigation of an easy building that you can do if someone was getting what you were going to get. Um, but yeah, I thought, I mean, it's still, I thought that th they were super neat though. Yeah. They, they were very unique. Um, Josh, how was the colorblind accessibility for you? And I kind of know the answer to this one. Uh, it, it needs tweaks. Yeah. Uh, definitely needs tweaks. Uh, the orange and the green. I didn't realize that that was going to be honestly. It's the the shades they used are just not. The funny thing is, is to to me the shades don't look anything comparable to each other. So that's that's interesting that um, they were issued for you. And then it's not a huge li like I can tell the difference between the blue and the purple. They're very those close are both to me. purple. Uh, th these are both purple. And yeah, those are blue. Yeah, Th I can tell the difference for them easily, but I would say these are the blue ones and those are the purple ones. I confuse those for purple too, though. Yeah. You did. It's like, almost like a periwinkle blue. Um, <laughs> so periwinkle blue is like a light or blue. So I can tell the difference. I just can't tell uh, that. Uh, I had some trouble with the arrows as well. Yeah, actually, th I I'm gonna issue a complaint about the arrows too, just because uh, there was one time where. I messed up a move because I thought it was a black arrow and it that was a blue arrow. That was the arrow. blue arrow that I got down there for my two blue tokens. Yeah. So I I did get affected by that a little bit. The blue and the red arrows are a little dark and can kind of be black and depending on the light. To me, I have to tell you that blue, yellow, and red are very much so primary blue, red, and yellow. Yeah, it's just that the blue is very dark. So that way it, it, it's similar to the black for me. Yeah. That's where my it's issues the came shade. into play. They, they need to, I think, be a little bit I, I would prefer if they put a symbol there instead of just a colored arrow, and that would completely solve colorblind or issues. Or design the di the triangles, stylize the triangles differently. Yeah, they could stylize the triangles differently, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So I mean, the game's beautiful with the art on the backward. I think a back side. I think that some nice stylized triangles would be pretty too. Mm -hmm. Some like yeah, maybe Celtic, almost like a uh, knot work there. Yeah, or um, what am I thinking of? With the in the manuscripts on the side, what are those called? Yeah, I know what you're talking we'll get about. Back to that. Yeah. yeah. Um. Some other side notes. So one of the rules that changed that uh, Elzer let me know just before the stream was you keep the obsidian yeah. after you build. Okay. I think the game might have been more interesting if you lost it and you had to recollect, and that would have made the game a little bit longer where you would have had more chances to build the palace and things like that. Yeah, because there was um, one round where I, I walked away with, like, four spare obsidian at the end of the yeah. build. Um, and the other thing is, yeah, it's an alt prototype, so colorblind. Awesome. Oh. Um, yeah, as we said, this is a prototype. Uh, the other thing is, uh, I would actually like to see the s amount of resources scale depend on player count. Yeah. I had the same thought because yeah, I, I think that it would have triggered the whole. I know you were talking about the rule with the three, whether we were going to be competitive or cooperative. We were very close with the bamboo in the beginning of the game. Yeah, but I think that it would have pushed. I, w I think that I think that I would want would have wanted that to have been pushed. Would I would have, or would I have been upset because I couldn't have gotten what I needed? I never felt like I was stuck. With getting a piece I didn't want. Mm -hmm. So I thought that the, the game did a good job I there. Definitely got to a port where Josh stole one of the buildings I wanted, but that was good. Like that was part of the game. Like I, I that was and I I chucked the tile at Josh, which that was probably you know we're talking about building the buildings being the highlight of the game. Chucking tiles at Josh <laughs> is probably the highlight of this game. No, I I definitely loved the the tactile response of the buildings and yeah. even had asked the dumb question halfway through does the building need to stand up and i have to tell you i really love i don't know i mean i really don't care about you and your color blindness right now i love the colors that they chose for these pieces all the colors work perfectly fine and they're yeah. all unique pieces so i don't have any issues but they're just that. it's such a pretty blue it's such a pretty like the light blue and the green and all the colors just kind of like look pretty with each other. I mean, I know they chose two blues. I'm partial to blue. <laughs> but it's just they're really... I think they should have made it purple. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's also um, thematic to the actual element as well. So. Yeah, I think it's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like bamboo being green. And, and the two blues being similar to each other as glass and crystal. Yes. Like, they should be. It's such a, such a pretty color scheme. Um, the last thing, which is... Really, my it's it's my like to have wish it mm -hmm. uh, player board. Yeah, uh, I know they're double sided to have the two different starting things on there. Yep, I would actually rather have a double cardboard player board that with a recessed area for each. Oh, so like a pool, so you don't accidentally knock your inventory knock into the other thing. Uh, and then a um, a slot to put tiles for starting what you start with. And that way, you can randomize. It's not dependent on your what player you pick. You just can. Randomize the uh, deal start time. One side would be one of each coin, or the other side would be whatever your starting things are. That would be pretty neat. Um, just to give it some more flexibility. Um, yeah. And I, I think it just uh, be a little nice component, but that's like wish to have. It's a really big board, and they used about a third of the width of the board for the character art. Yeah. I wanted to say at the beginning of the game that I wanted a quick reference guide. I don't know if it's because like we're all playing together and you understand the game a lot. I love the art. The art is definitely like definitely top pro in this game. But I feel like more information could have been that there there could have been better the, 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 so with the size of the board, I would have liked to have a little bit more information about gameplay on here, I think. Okay. All right. So, anything else from either of you two? I need more buildings to build and puzzles. Yeah, I think more buildings is definitely uh, something I would request as well. Yes. All right, so going into the most important question of the evening of would you play this game again? So I'm going to throw it down to the end there, Josh. Yeah, I would actually really like to play the token variant and the more competitive mm -hmm. and, and see how that goes. Um, I, I think that would be really – bring this up a little bit, and, and I would enjoy that a lot. All right, and – uh, give me more buildings, and then I think that I would I would bring this out again to see the more buildings. Okay. I'm going to say I think I would really like to try the solo variant to this, just because it would eliminate some of the frustrations that I have while allowing me to enjoy the tactile feel and uh, the, the spatial, you know, building of the stuff. Um, 
wouldn't be the first thing I pulled off the shelf, but I, I definitely would play if a group wanted to play, and I think I would be preferential to playing the competitive version, as you said, Josh. Got to be aggressive. <laughs> Got to be aggressive. Be, be aggressive. aggressive. All right, so anything else, folks, that you wanted to bring up? Uh, no, sorry. Uh, oh. Thanks, Elzer, for sponsoring this week's stream and all of this week's stream. I, don't know I was getting I there. Know. Thank you, Elzer Games, for sponsoring this stream and all of this week's streams with their spotlight of Catacombs Cubes live on Kickstarter on August 21st. That is just two days away here if you're watching this live. If you're watching us on demand, I don't know what day you're on, but <laughs> it's coming out soon. Uh, so if you haven't watched our spotlight, you can check out a full rules explanation and a playthrough. So definitely check that out. And thank you again, Elzer, for watching and responding to some of the questions that we had live on air. And with that, this is going to be Twist Gaming signing off. Thank you all for joining us today. I'm Matt. I'm Ann. Josh. Have a good one, everyone. Goodbye. Goodbye.